Hello, I'm David Kaufman here in Boulder, Colorado on behalf of the National Capital Area Skeptics, also known as NCAS, an independent nonprofit educational and scientific membership organization founded in 1987 in the Washington, D.C. area that promotes critical thinking and scientific understanding. Today, NCAS presents an award given in memory of Philip J. Class, in addition to his work as a leading aerospace journalist and editor for the magazine Aviation Week and Space Technology, he was the world's foremost skeptical investigator of reports of unidentified flying objects, along with claims of alien abductions and government cover-up of UFO inform information. Mr. Klass was also one of the founders and a mentor of NCAS. In gratitude for his role in founding NCAS and for his contributions to critical thinking and scientific understanding, this award is dedicated to him, presented each year for outstanding contributions in promoting critical thinking and scientific understanding. This year's award is presented to Dr. Philip Plate. He's known as the bad astronomer, but it's not for anything he's done wrong. In fact, it's for something very good. His long-running website and blog, Bad Astronomy, and his book of the same name, which discusses astronomy that is bad, clearing up public misconceptions about astronomy and space science in movies, television, print, and on the internet. By tapping into the public's deep interest in astronomy and space, he has been able to reach a large audience with his enthusiastic, humorous, and accessible writings. He makes excellent use of myths and misconceptions as a starting point and then guides readers away from what they think they know towards genuine scientific thought, experimentation, and knowledge. After more than 15 years, Bad Astronomy remains one of the most popular science blogs, now covering a wider array of science topics. Dr. Plate's passion for science and educating the public is unmistakable in his writings and even more so in his public events at universities, conventions, museums, and scientific institutions, as well as immediate interviews, television appearances, and podcasts. He also happens to be a native and longtime resident of the D.C. area, now living the good life here in Boulder. <laughs> Phil Plate, on behalf of the National Capital Area Skeptics, I present you with the 2013 Philip J. Class Award. Well, thank you. Oh my gosh, it's heavy. Wow, thank you very much, David. Thanks sure. for Congratulations. That introduction, that makes it seem very legitimate. Uh, it is, people say this a lot, and uh, they may or may not mean it, but I honestly do. It is truly an honor to receive this. It's always the best to be recognized by your peers. And uh, the National Capital Area, uh, Capital Area Skeptics is a fantastic organization. It's been around for a long time. And as someone who was uh, born and raised and lived for quite a few years in the Washington, D.C. area, it's fantastic to be recognized by this group. And also, to receive this award named after Philip Class, great first name, got to give him that, uh, specifically because he made his name talking about UFOs and debunking them, which is not necessarily a term I like because it's, it's got negative connotations and very aggressive connotations but that's what you're doing right and he started doing that and, and I kind of got my start doing that as well I've, I've always loved astronomy I've always been interested in space and when I was a kid and I'm, I fully and freely admit this I was a big UFO nut I read all the books uh, I was outside all the time looking for flying saucers watched all the TV shows Project Blue Book and all that great stuff and eventually over time came to realize that maybe the stuff I'm hearing about and the pictures I'm seeing eh, maybe weren't real, maybe at least weren't really spaceships. And that was sort of my first steps towards becoming a skeptic. And becoming a skeptic isn't something you choose to do necessarily, it's just something that kind of happens. And then you turn around and look back and go, oh, I see, this is how I got to this point. And once you start critically thinking about stuff, it becomes a habit, and it's more than a habit, it becomes something you want to do. And the more I did it, the more fun it was. It was like a puzzle. I've always loved doing puzzles, Martin Gardner's books and crossword puzzles and things like that. It became more natural, which is funny because critical thinking and skepticism is not natural. You have to show people how to do it in general. And that, that part of it became natural to me. I'm kind of a ham, maybe some of you know this. So it was a lot of fun for me to, to go out and start speaking about this kind of thing, to start writing about this kind of thing. And it's not like I ever set out to become a face of skepticism or anything like that, and you can argue whether that's true or not now, uh, but it's just something that happened. And 
to be able to become a part of the community, to, to be able to speak to people in front of it, to, to be able to uh, write and sometimes be on TV or to do podcasts or, or be interviewed or whatever, has been uh, an honor and it has tickled me to be able to do this. I want to also say uh, to thank you to the NCAS for this. Um, it, it helps. Being a critical thinker is hard in today's society. Uh, critical thinkers are as rare in society as compromise in, in the Washington, D.C. area, in fact. Um, and so to get the positive feedback, to, to get the support, helps a lot because there are those days, right? There are those days where the emails are coming, the tweets are coming, and people are just hounding you and saying, you're a jerk, and why are you saying this, and you're wrong, and, you're, and it gets to be a weight around your neck. So to, to be able to... To, to be able to, to receive this sort of recognition. And actually, you know what? Something physical is nice. I keep myself surrounded by meteorites. I'm a meteorite collector, and I've got a few of them lying around my office, and I do that specifically because, well, they're awesome, but also because they're real, they're science, they're really old, and they remind me uh, that, you know, we, we are a part of this world for a short time. That may sound a little bit you know, hackneyed, but it's true. These things are extremely old, and they remind me of that, and they remind me that even though we're only here for a short time, even though we only have a small piece of the world we can participate in, there is a greater world out there. There is a greater amount of science out there, and we have access to it, and we are able to understand it. And a large part of that is because of our ability to think critically. So uh, thank you very much, and I'd like to especially thank Grace and Chip Denman, who have been friends for a long time, been very supportive of me, uh, even before I was part of the JREF, uh, and even now. So again, to David, to everybody uh, who is with the NCAS, thank you very much. This means a huge amount to me, and will keep me going uh, when the days are dark and when they're bright. Thank you very much.